first thing we're going to do before we get our liner unpackaged and into the trough, you want to get your tape measure and you want to make sure your trough is in the exact position where you want it and that it's squared all the way down from end to end. But once we get the liner in, and especially with water, it will be near impossible to move. So what we do is, whatever the nearest wall is to your trough, you measure the furthest point out and you get your number. So here I'm at 42 and a half inches. And what I'll do next is go all the way down the trough every few feet and continue measuring from the same distance from the wall to the trough to make sure that it's square. So now we have the black wrapping off and now you can see the factory sealed blue sleeve that is placed over it. This time I'm using no knife. Actually what you probably want to do is to take your knife and set it down and have no sharp objects near the dirt scrim. You don't want to risk puncturing it any, anywhere. The great thing about what they do is they only tape it uh, every few inches down the line. But with your hand, you can actually just peel off the tape. One thing about JD is he is barefoot right now. And that is important when walking atop the insulation on the inside of the trough. We don't want to bring in any outside puddles or stones that will puncture the bottom of the dirt screen. Look, JD's on the seam side, which will run down to the center of the trough. The reason you want the seam to be in the center of the trough is because on the other end of this trough, we have our plumbing inlet component. And you don't want that seam to push up against us. So being center gives you that space to be safe. The only other thing we want to stress here is that on this, on this, uh, end, on each end of the trough, we want about two extra feet of the dirt strip hanging over each end wall. And we'll explain more of that why later. But what we're going to do is we're actually going to roll out about two feet extra, leave it behind, and then we're going to process down the drop. JD is on one end. I'm going to come right here. I'm going to grab the other end. We're going to unfold our liner. The other tool that we need for this uh, for this part of the installation is going to be these rail clips. These are just little plastic things and they clip right on. And these are going to be what secures your liner to your frame. So the first thing we're doing here is we want to make sure that we have no creases anywhere here. Right here I might have a little crease. All you'd want to do is get on either side of it and stretch it out like that. You just want to iron it out. It's time to start securing this with those rail clips. Now, on the, underneath this is our frame, and the frame is held together by these three right corners right here. And you can actually, if you run your finger or your hand over the top, you can actually find where the end of that assembly part is. So you're going to have the assembly and then the framing pipe. Now what we like to do is what we call the phantom liner clip. I'm going to go to the end of the fitting right here where my finger is, measure out about an inch to the left of it, Put my finger down here and directly move this over. And now the reason that we'd use this phantom clip and go four feet down rather than starting on the corner is because of these corners, we still need to fold these over and we will be borrowing a lot of this excess duroscrim and pulling it and kind of manipulating it to how we need to make an even fold on the end. So when doing your rail clips, start four feet from where you would normally start and leave this down. So now comes time to use the rail clips. Now what I'm feeling for here is what's called the radius curve. And the radius curve essentially means that the, the liner inside of this is not too flat and square to the ground, but there's also not too much stress on the curve of this right here. We don't want this to uh, burst at any time when it's filled with water. So all I'm doing is I'm taking my hand and I'm gonna run it down the side of this. And as soon as I get closer to the bottom, I want to start feeling the bottom of the insulation on the ground and also a little bit of resistance and air beneath my palm here so that when I'm stretching, I don't feel the walls of the trough. So right now, I feel pretty good about where this is. As you can see, I can touch the ground on my fingertips and my palm is a little bit of wiggle room here. Although these are dull, they still run the risk of puncturing because they are tight and they compress. So what you want to do is you want to lift up a little bit and just ease it on there as gently as possible. And you can see that it's on and just move your hand down all the way. That way neither end ran the risk of puncturing the liner. 
Now, even if my radius curve here was a little loose or a little tight, opposite me, my partner will be able to, because they are unclipped, they will be able to pull it, or if need be, push more liner into the trough to give me that desired radius curve. All right, so now I'm on the other side of our trough. My side is already clipped. Now JD wants to clip his side. If you look on the ground here, you will see that our Duraskrim is a little excessively laying over it rather than just touching the floor. What we want is we want it to be even on both sides. I want that skirt to just be touching flush with the ground. The way that you would do this is you actually just want to push the Duraskrim back into the trough. Because if you have excess aligner over here on the side, that means that your radius curve is too steep and you can actually uh, give, it, give it some relief by pushing the liner back into the trough using his hand to both feel the ground where the liner runs up against the floor and also the radius curve all the way down. And once JD finds that comfortable radius curve and the comfortable height off the ground, he will then clip it with his rail clip. All right, so now we have our two anchor clips on either end. Um, we used a phantom clip for both sides of that. Um, and then what we're going to do next is we have all of our rail clips uh, lined out directly on the ground behind me, going all the way down the trough. And it's basically... Uh, repeat from here and just keep doing the same thing, checking the height of the liner off the ground as well as the radius curve. Remember, if the Duraskrim is hanging over and you have excess, just push it back into the trough until you find that comfortable radius curve of, of tension and height on the ground. Actually, if you look inside of the middle of the trough where the seam is, you might see a little bit of excess Duraskrim that is still not yet ironed out. Don't worry about that, because once you get water in here, it's going to kind of spread all those wrinkles out, and it's actually going to give you more Duraskrim along the side here. So if you're erring on the side of caution, you want to give yourself more pitch than you actually think you need, because if you go too steep and then these, uh, these wrinkles are ironed out, that's going to give you too flat of a, of a curve here. So if anything, you want it to maybe be a bit more tense than how you would normally like it, because once that spreads out, we're going to be uh, even keel. As you can see here in the corner, JD is doing his best to kind of push in and push out uh, the Dura script to get it flat and 90 degrees inside of the corner. Uh, a move he often likes to do, which we recommend, is sort of a karate chop move where you go from the outside with your hand this way, and behind it, inside of it, you're going to push the other way with your hand. Um, yeah, and he's just smoothing it out, and it really just is going to take your time your patience and a lot of self-forgiveness because it is a difficult uh, task to complete. Uh, but as you can see, JD is going up and down, even the line, even the side of the trough where we have rail clips, he's continually ironing it out. What you want to do is if you see excess uh, dirt scrim that side, you want to be pulling all the excess towards you outside of the trough. That's the great thing about this is that the excess moves where you push it. As you can see over here, we have a lot of dirt scrim and that's a good thing. We did that on purpose. What might have to happen is we might have to trim some of this excess down because it's getting really clumsy over here on the ground. So we might just take our knife and cut off foot, maybe even half a foot, just to give ourselves some more wiggle room and some air to breathe in. So we kind of have a good idea of what our two corners are going to look like. JD has been just continually working inside and outside on top of and underneath the Duraskrim to get the fold nicely inside of the middle here. We do have a bit of a crease right here, a little bit of excess Duraskrim that we just can't push out. But you know, at this point in the stage, it becomes more of an aesthetic preference of how you want your corners to look. As long as you remember to maintain the radius curve, right here it's a little loose, um, I could use a little bit more tension here, so I'm just going to roll it out, or even pull it out a little bit, and find, find that good spot, find the sweet spot. And then at the end of it, uh, we're going to continue to clip and clean off the edges right here. We advise two solutions to getting rid to removing this excess Duraskrim because once it's clipped, no more can go in, no more can come out. It has to be dealt with. If we're working on, say, a cement ground and we had uh, a solid pavement beneath us, we'd break our one cardinal rule. We would take a knife, we would push this Duraskrim flat up to the bottom, we would find where the bottom of the frame is, and we'd find this crease, and we'd say, okay, it's pretty flat, it's pretty secure down here. I'm gonna take my knife and go right underneath the bottom of what I feel is the frame, and just drag my knife, and that will lead me 
with a net with enough coverage on this end here to touch the ground without falling over or without being too short. Unfortunately, we're working on a dirt cloth right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a sharpie. We're gonna do the same principle, but instead of a knife, we're gonna use the sharpie. I'm gonna find the bottom of the trough. I'm just gonna make a small line every couple of inches. And as I go down, I'm continually smoothing this down and pushing it up to make sure I have enough scrim. I don't wanna to cut too much off. So I feel good about there. I feel good here. And I'm gonna do this all the way down. And then when comes time, we're gonna pick it up and we're gonna drag our knife or scissors and cut it directly down. So now we're on the other end of our trough. And right here underneath this dirt scrim is our piece of wood. And the piece of wood is actually, we have um, three holes drilled into the wood where we're gonna have our air, our fill, and our drain, com our plumbing components going in. So what's very special about this wall is that it's completely flat. See, without me even touching it or smoothing it, you can go straight down it. We want a flat surface here so that when we feed our bulkhead through, the liner will not be pulling against it. Once the rail clips have been attached to the end wall, it's now time to cut the holes where we will feed our plumbing components into the deep water culture trough. Push firmly on the liner to locate the hole from the outside of the DWC. Find the center of the hole and cut two perpendicular lines in a cross formation from edge to edge of the hole. This will separate the liner into four sections. Do this on both the inside and outside of the liner. Following the outline of the pre-cut hole, use the knife to remove the four sections of liner just cut. Repeat these steps for the next two holes. I am standing inside of the, the trough with the liner on the ground. You notice I'm not wearing shoes, I'm only in my socks. Next we're going to lay down the airline tubing and you want to do this before you fill the tank, uh, the trough with water. So all we do is we have one end here. I'm going to gently lay this down. I'm going to take this end and I'm going to fit it onto the air inlet valve. Just like that. Perfect. Now. The rest of my job is going to be to hold this bowl of, uh, of tubing and go all the way down and come back down with it. The reason I said to gently drop it on the ground is that this airline tubing is connected with these little barbed T's here. And if you look right here, this is going to be where your air stone is going to go on, just like this. But right now, we don't have the air stones uh, attached to the tube. So all we have is this exposed uh, barb right here, which is a risk for the Duraskrim as a puncture. So as I'm going down, I'm just gonna gently un unroll it and make sure, so right here, for example, you see how it's going into the ground? I'm gonna get down and I'm just gonna twist it. So that it's pointing up. I don't run the risk as I'm going down of the scratching or puncturing the Duraskrim. I'm gonna pick it up and just gently go the entire, not the entire length of the Duraskrim, but we're gonna come down, I'm gonna pull it a little bit. We're gonna keep it going, and here I'm gonna turn. And don't worry if it's a little kinked and not completely straight, because once I have it down and attached to the other end, I'm gonna come back down and use my hands and twist the tubing. That way it's straight and flat all the way down. Connect the other end. And now this is when I want to go down and start making sure that my T's are not posing a risk to me or the Duraskrim. And these T's these are very delicate. They snap very easily. So you want to make sure, not only now, but also later on as you're putting the airstone on, not to apply too much force and run the risk of breaking it. Twist it, straighten it out, down here. The next step is to uh, attach our air stones. They are barbed like this, and then we attach a little bit of vinyl tubing to it, just like that. And these T's that are on the uh, airline tubing, we're going to fit it on ever so snugly, and just twist it so it's laying down flat. These are um, a little coarse, so you want to be careful not to thump it down. You just want to gently place it down, because again, we're trying to protect the integrity of the Duraskram time to uh, install our water inlet assembly. I'm going to get a stick of 
one inch pipe. And it's okay if you go over the uh, over the aeration tube because that actually with that weight of the water will actually help keep that down. I'm gonna push it in there as tight as I can. I have a one inch PVC coupler. I'm gonna come down here, attach it to this end, put another stick of pipe down, and continue all the way down my trough. All right, so now we're at the end of the trough. Uh, our PVC lines up about half a foot from this end wall here. Um, so now it's the time to add the distribution side of this inlet, which consists of two pieces of PVC connected by a T with an elbow on either end. And that is gonna be what pushes the water back towards our drain. One thing to consider is when you're dropping the pipe, don't ever really drop it and let the end hit the Duraskrim. That's part of our risk management to avoid punctures. I'm just going to attach this on. The one thing, another thing here is that there's no gluing involved. Uh, the water pressure is not enough to really jettison this off the pipe. Um, so we have it hooked up there, and once we got water flowing in, we're gonna see a continuous stream of water pushing it towards the drain. Very special note to consider when installing your liner in your trough is to make sure that you have the rest of your installation assemblies completed before going into the trough. And we're speaking primarily about anything that might be going over. So sometimes if you have uh, a light rail, or uh, other components such as fans or anything for the structure of the greenhouse or the room that the system is operating within, you don't want to be installing that and hanging things while the liner is in place. Um, you want to do all that prior to it, that way you don't run the risk of dropping a hammer, dropping a screw, dropping a knife, anything into the liner.